doesn't love a good trilogy? Back to the Future, Lord of the Rings, the original Star Wars, Kung Fu Panda. All the great franchises stop at three. That is, until they don't. For some unknown reason, well actually no, it's money, it's always money, film studios love to push their luck and push their series beyond the magic number. Anything beyond the third picture is always a tough one to crack, as audiences' attention spans have usually fizzled out by this point. And so, with that in mind, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with the 10 best fourth movies in franchises. Number 10. The Return of the Pink Panther some of you might be surprised to learn that The Pink Panther is not just a cartoon. Spanning back to the early 1960s, The Pink Panther series is actually a collection of comedy films about a famous diamond. The animated big cat is, in the world of the movies, what people see when they look into the gem at the right angle. The films are famously helmed by Inspector Clouseau, a bumbling French detective who is often tasked with protecting the jewel, but ultimately ends up making things worse. Peter Sellers played the inspector in six of the first seven Panther films, including its fourth movie, The Return of the Pink Panther, from 1975. The diamond is stolen yet again, and Clouseau must recover from being demoted by an unhinged superior to recover it. The film was universally beloved upon its release, with many fans and critics praising the series' return to its slapstick roots. Sellers was also commended for bringing the clumsy Frenchman back to the screen in all his glory. The actor sadly passed away in 1980, but at least he never lived to see the god-awful reboot series with Steve Martin. Number 9. Barbershop – The Next Cut For all those saying, but this is actually the third Barbershop film, actually, we have one word for you. Beauty Shop. Wait, is that two words? Beauty Shop was a spin-off of the Barbershop films that came out in 2005 and was fronted by Queen Latifah. The reason you haven't heard of it is because it wasn't very good. What was very good was the original film in the series, which starred Ice Cube as a hairdresser working in the titular establishment. The sequel was fine, and the third movie, well, we covered that one already. Mr. Cube returned to his role as Calvin Palmer Jr. for 2016's The Nets Cut, 12 years after he last played the character. Thankfully, he hadn't lost a step as the movie was praised for its comedy and heartfelt portrayal of life in working class Chicago. In fact, some even argued that this movie was better than the original, which is absolutely mad when you consider how badly fourth installments usually do. Number 8. Annabelle Creation the Conjuring universe has come a long way since the first film was released in 2013. It is now one of modern horror's biggest franchises, with eight films under its belt and two more on the way. Part of the series' success is down to the two iconic villains it has created. Valak, better known as The Nun, has one movie all about her, with a second incoming in late 2023, and then there's Annabelle, the creepiest doll there ever was. Sorry Chucky, but come on, you know what you did. Based on a real-life doll owned by the real-life Ed and Lorraine, Warren, Annabelle is a porcelain plaything with all the terrifying presence of a shark with a gun. She is creepy as all hell, and to make matters worse, she's possessed by a demon. Yay! The origins of the doll are explored in Annabelle Creation, the fourth overall picture in the Conjuring universe. The events of the film led right into those of the first Annabelle film, which in turn sets up the first Conjuring film. It's confusing, but this is a really scary movie that works just as well outside of the larger canon. Number 7. Thunderball it's hard to imagine a time where the Bond movies numbered in the single digits. Well, I mean, actually it's not, because that time was before 1977, but you get the idea. Despite starting with Doctor No in 1962, Bond really got going with its third film, Goldfinger, two years later. Then, one year after that, Bond number four came into view. The name's Ball. Thunderball. Sean Connery continued his hot streak as 007 in this mystery about some stolen bombs that takes the secret agent to the Bahamas. Oh, what a tough life. The movie continued the good work of Goldfinger, packing in more excitement, explosions, and gadgets into the runtime. Connery sizzles. Femme fatale Fiona Volpe is a highlight, as are the underwater fight scenes that dominate the final third of the film. Yes, it has all the dodginess associated with Bond films from this time, but that's par for the course with basically any cinema from the mid-1960s. We're not excusing it, we're just explaining it. If you're after a classic spy adventure that doesn't drag like the first two Bonds do, then call your shot on Thunderball. Also, that theme song is a belter. Number 6. Land of the Dead 
Between 1968 and 2009, horror maestro and professional crazy man George A. Romero directed six zombie movies that all fall under the Living Dead umbrella. Night of the Living Dead kicked it off, but the one most people will know is Dawn of the Dead from 1978. The film is still regarded as one of the best zombie films ever made, and even inspired a remake from Zack Snyder in 2004. You know, back when Snyder's name was a sign of quality. On Romero's side, next came Day of the Dead before we finally arrive at our destination. 2005's Land of the Dead. Set several years after the rise of the zombies, this film depicts a human safe zone ruled over by a ruthless plutocrat as the poor living squalor. It follows the life of Riley, the commander of an anti-zombie vehicle named Dead Reckoning, as well as a group of intelligent undead living outside the city walls. Offering several twists on the genre, Land of the Dead doesn't just show you people's brains being eaten, it also puts yours to good use as well. Number 5. Mothra vs Godzilla the world's favourite giant lizard thing, Godzilla has been around for a long time. A very long time. In fact, Guinness World Records recognises the series as being the longest continuously running film franchise, as the big boy has been churning out movies since 1954. After battling Anguirus and King Kong in films 2 and 3, Godzilla faced a threat from above when he took on El Bugo Gigantico aka Mothra. That isn't a real name for Mothra by the way, so please don't think that it is. First appearing in her own movie in 1961, Mothra turns up in this one as the hero against a scaly enemy. Once again, themes of humanity's disrespect of nature are on display here, as a greedy businessman buys one of Mothra's eggs for his own devices. As well as presenting audiences with the usual monster bashing fun, Mothra vs Godzilla stays true to the series' core mission statement of challenging nuclear testing. The giant moth originally refuses to help humanity after missile tests ravaged her home, but eventually agrees once they agree to build a better to world. Let's hope we don't need Mothra's help again because she's going to figure out we were lying. Number 4 Toy Story 4 Look, we know what you're thinking, and we agree. Toy Story 3 was the perfect ending to the trilogy. Andy going off to college and leaving his beloved toys behind was as heartwarming as it was tear-jerking. And everyone was suitably upset when Pixar announced that they were returning to the story nine years later. But come on. This film rules! Reuniting Woody with his beloved Bo Peep, Toy Story 4 explores the concept of lost toys. What happens when a toy decides to live without a child? The film plays with ideas of loneliness, purpose and existentialism when it introduces Forky into the mix. He's a spork that Bonnie affixed eyes and a pipe cleaner to, bringing it to life. Does that make Bonnie a god? Whilst Toy Story 3 was the end of Andy's story, Toy Story 4 brought Woody some closure as the cowboy finally figures out what he wants from life without his former owner. You could argue that it was an unnecessary add-on, or that it ignored a lot of the secondary characters, but this is still a fun watch with that classic Pixar emotion thrown in for good measure. Number 3. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol Ethan Hunt returned to cinemas after a five-year break played by a 49-year-old Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible Midlife Crisis. Whoops, we meant Ghost Protocol. Hunt and his team return to action in a quest to prevent an all-out nuclear war between the USA and Russia, a scenario that seems completely outdated these days. This all gets a bit complicated when the group gets blamed for a bombing that destroys most of the Kremlin. In terms of strategies, maybe that wasn't the best one. The film is crammed with all the usual gunfights and mental stunts you've come to to expect from the series, including Hunt scaling the world's tallest building in Dubai, which Tom Cruise actually did for real. Seriously, is there anything he can't do? Except maybe hold down a marriage. The film got great reviews thanks to its incredible set pieces and breakneck pacing. Director Brad Bird, more famous for animations like The Incredibles and Ratatouille, was also praised for his excellent use of space. A big budget blockbuster with enough in there for fans of well-made cinema, Ghost Protocol is a worthy addition to one of film's most dependable franchises. Franchises. Number 2 Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire in The Boy Wizard's fourth year at Hogwarts, Harry and his pals not only have to fight dragons, mermaids, and the returning Voldemort, they also come face to face with the most terrifying enemy of all puberty. Set against the backdrop of the Triwizard Tournament, the Goblet of Fire weaves several interlocking threads together into one compelling story. Harry is in the tournament, but he's also receiving visions of you-know-who's return and also Ron's angry at him and he's being hounded by the press. 
that's a lot for one floppy-haired kid to deal with all at once. The movie also introduces some beloved characters into the Potter canon. Brendan Gleeson makes his first appearance as Mad-Eye Moody, whilst Harry's love interest Cho Chang turns up being played by Katie Lung. Oh, and Ray Fiennes as a full-bodied Voldemort, although he is famously Sans Nose. Exciting, emotional, funny and charming, The Goblet of Fire is a firm favourite of fans of the series and serves as an excellent bridging point between the two halves of the Hogwarts saga. Also, Jarvis Cocker is the lead singer of a wizard rock band? Yes, please. Number 1. Mad Max Fury Road George Miller's post-apocalyptic, car-loving series had really gone off the rails by film number three. Beyond Thunderdome was a campy affair to say the least, anchored by a shrieking Tina Turner as the leader of a group of depraved new society. Whilst the movie was well received, it essentially ended the series with its wackiness. That is, until Miller brought it back 30 years later with new ideas, new stories and a new Max. With Tom Hardy now in the lead role, Mad Max Fury Road hit our screens in 2015, and boy was it something. Set across one lone continuous car chase, the film is almost non-stop action with very little dialogue, and yet still manages to convey a compelling story and portray its characters effectively. It helps that those characters are absolutely bonkers. You know you're onto something when a pale Nicholas Holt doesn't even break the top 10 weirdest people in your movie. Fury Road not only got the series back on track, but it scooped about a billion awards too, including six Oscars. A welcome return and a great standalone piece this movie is the perfect example that four is sometimes the magic number. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.